Good evening. Uh, we're going to continue the, the previous class that we had about about the uh, scientific uh, classification. And now the focus directly on the concept of mean of species. Where we find that in the Torah itself and what, it, what mean means. As we said before, that's a pun on words. So we find the word mean in the first account of creation. And very, very uh, significantly, <coughs> the word species appears exactly ten times in the first account of creation. We know that God created the world with ten sayings. So even though the ten times that the word species appears do not appear in the ten explicit sayings of creation, but the fact that the number is the same is that there must be a very, very uh, important relationship and uh, parallel between the, the ten sayings of creation and the ten times that the word mean appears in creation. So, on the third day of creation is the first time it appears, because uh, mean is, is uh, a biological uh, concept, and uh, it can only uh, appear when there's life form on earth and life form on earth only appears on the third day for the first time on the third day of creation that's where the word mean appears for the first time and the first time it's it appears in relation to eight pre or set pre limino that's the very first time the first time is the opening time and the opening time sets the stage for all the times to come so the first time is actually it's a, a fruit tree which gives fruit in accordance with its species, the mino. Then the together with the trees there are also the grasses, the dash and the asev. So after after they're created the the word mean appears two other times. The minehu, in a slightly different grammatical form that we'll understand. The very first time is the mo in or after its species. The next two times, it also appears on the third day. So on the third day, there are three, three and three, the third day and three times that the word species appears. And, uh, and it, uh, it appears in the, the first time, the minon, and other two times, the minehu with an additional hay, which also would be translated exactly the same way, after its species. The fourth day of creation has no species because it's not talking about life, it's talking about the creation of the of the heavenly bodies, the sun and the and the moon. So there's no species on the first and second and fourth day of creation. But then the fifth day of creation was already the fish and the birds. So the fish and the birds do have species and this word species is uh, is uh, repeats itself twice on the fifth day of creation. The birds and the fish that are created each one in accordance with its species. Then on the final day of creation, which is the animal, the dry land animal uh, animals, so the, the word species actually repeats itself uh, five times. Four times limina in the, in the, in the feminine. The very first time was the, the tree, the species of the tree, which was in the masculine because tree is masculine but the, the next time the next four the four times in the beginning of the sixth day of creation all in the feminine limina after her species it's its species but it's feminine because it's referring to to chayot and behemot and both the word chaya and the word behemot which chaya is usually a wild animal and behemot is usually a domestic animal both are feminine words so the the species is also in the feminine tense, Lemina. Then there's one more time at the end, Leminehu. That's actually the word Mineh, we can already note that it, it's Lemin after the species, but it has both, it's masculine grammatically, but it has also the hay of the feminine. There's something about that particular form, Leminehu, that implies a, a cohabitation, a union of the male element and the female, beginning with the female hay before the male love, like the concept of Isha 
Masrat Chila Yoledet Zafar, that the, the female gives her seed first, and then the male seed comes after in the act of reproduction. In any event, that's the word Lemineo. So there are ten times altogether. Three times are also divided into three and seven, which is the general division of ten. There are three vegetable species, times the word species, and then there are seven animal species. Because the animal species themselves divide into two and five. There are two on the fifth day, which is the birds and the fish, the fish and the birds, and there are five on the, on the sixth day, which is the, the animals. The continuation of the sixth day is cr the creation of man. So in, re in, re in regard to man, there's no species mentioned. The word species does not appear. Just because it, it says that God created man in his image. So there's no need, or maybe it even would be uh, inappropriate to refer to man as a species. So, but nonetheless, the word species itself is it repeats itself ten different times. Now, as we mentioned in the last class, the very word species is ten squared, because the word species means the word itself is one hundred, which is ten times ten. So it's most, most significant that that word appears exactly ten times in the in, in creation. Now, what does the word mean? We have to try to understand the etymology of the, of the word of mean, what mean means. So most of the grammarians explain that mean, it, based upon its the other Semitic languages, not always is it, is it easy to understand simply from the Tanakh what a certain words, especially simple words like this word mean, what, they, what their original meaning is. So what many grammarians over the last several centuries do is is uh, is understand the Hebrew word from by studying the all of the Semitic uh, languages, which ultimately all derive from the primordial Hebrew language of creation. So based upon that, the the word mean is understood to mean the imagination of the heart. That's what it means. That's what the word means. It means the word species in Hebrew comes from the heart's power of imagination to compare and put things together under one common picture. To picture things alike. Even now in, in the modern biology, the scholars themselves still have much, much uh, controversy as how to even define species. In our last class we said that the simplest and most straightforward uh, definition of species has to do with fertile reproduction. But there are many, many others. There are maybe ten different definitions given for species. And it's very, very clear that even though we said that philosophically, and this is like a, well, well, this we can uh, now understand even better, but we explained in our last class that philosophically the very first thing the person has to try to, to comprehend is species and higher and higher levels of categories above species. But there's something very, very, in this science or this philosophy, there's something still very subjective about it. And that's exactly what the biologists are saying. That's why physicists don't like biology, because it's all, it's all subjective. It's not, math it's not simple mathematics. When you get to, to, uh, to chemical biology, then it becomes a little bit more exact scientists. You're talking about uh, how chemicals react with one another. But when you talk, especially in this concept of classification of species, so it it depends very very strongly upon the upon the mind and the and simply it's a imagine what does the word imagination mean? It means likeness, similarity. It's koacham dame. So again, this is a very very imp a deep and important uh, first realization that what biologists are primarily doing when they're trying to define life forms, and especially if then they get to the next stage that they wanted to talk about evolution, which is much more problematic, so in much more than any other 
so-called science, it's a, the greatest projection of the power of imagination in the heart of that scientist. It's called, but the term that's used in the grammar books in Hebrew that mean, means bado milev. That's the definition. The conjecture of the heart. That's what the word species means. We know that Adam, Adam himself, Adam, his name also comes from the mut, from likeness. So he called the animals by names. That's what it says in the second account of creation. And by calling the animals by name, he was also given generic, he was defining species. Because he was calling them by name, and that was the wisdom of his, his heart, to call them by name and give them a species. Before the sin of the Eitz Haddad, Tovera, what does that sin imply? It means that that sin of eating from the forbidden fruit of the tree, the tree is the first concept, the first uh, entity that has species to it. So you lose your pristine sense of making proper associations. Then you can go wrong in your associate, your power of association which is, means how to categorize and how to put things together. But now how do we see, besides the Semitic languages, how do we know that, uh, that this is really true? That the, the, in the Torah the word mean means bado milev, the conjecture of the heart, of how to associate and imagine similarities between life forms that one experiences in life. So the the real proof of this in Hebrew is that the the root of mean, mem yud nun, is also, according to most grammarians, the root of tmuna, which means picture. So what a species is, is, is it has the same picture to it. Now, the concept of picture is, is a concept that's used by modern biologists to define species, usually in contrast to those that define species by, by reproduction. There's some common, that doesn't necessarily mean an external picture. It could be a genetic picture. There are many theories that, that are, are uh, once more taxonomies that that define species genetically, not because not to, not based upon reproduction. Means that the DNA have the same picture; they they resemble one; they're very closely re related to one another. So close that it's the same species. It's defined to be the same species. So once more, the the word mean is is under the same category, the same sug, the concept of species with the word in Hebrew timuna, which is picture. So again, this is very, very clear and uh, straightforward what, 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 what this implies. Now this also reveals a, another aspect about creation that is sometimes considered to be a problem with the first story of creation versus the second story of creation. In the first hour of creation, the two verbs that are used when God creates reality are either bara, which means to create, which implies creation ex nihilo, or asa, which means to make. And making implies or even just making things better and better, improving reality, which is all, almost like an evolutionary uh, uh, vision of, uh, of, of making things. But there's an intermediate level, which is Yatsar, to form, formation, like we have the, the, three, the three lower worlds of Riyah, Yitzhirah, Asiya. How to form only appears, that word, that verb, to form only appears in the second account of creation. The first account of creation, even in relation to man itself, it's, it's when the, the saying to create man is Na'ase Adam, Bitzalmenu Kidmutenu Hashem, as it were, turns to the angels and says, let us make with a collective effort, or according to the Ishbitzer, he's turning to all of creation. And he says to all of creation, let us make. 
So the word, the verb, is very important. The word is to make, which means if, if according to the Ishbitz of the turn into creation, it's once more it's an evolutionary concept. Let us all combine all of our powers to make man. But then, in the very next verse, it doesn't use that word to make anymore. It says, that's three times. Three times in the same verse that he was created, created, created. It's ex nihilo, ex nihilo, ex nihilo. So even though the initial statement is, let us make, but then the the way that he was actually brought into being, into existence, was created, created, created. But only when we reach the second account of creation, then we find that man was formed. And that verb appears for the first time to be formed. So as though that, and, if, and we know that this formation, it's you know, an intermediate level between creation and, and uh, making, and action. So the question is, why, why did the first account of creation leave that out? Leave formation out? So the answer is, now we have the answer to that question. The answer is that the concept of mean, of species, is the Yitzhira level of creation. Because since it's called Yitzhira, just as we said before, that the commandments define mean to be Badomi Lev, the conjecture of the art. The next <coughs> way that they defined it, was the continuation of that definition, is Yitzhira Makshavot Libo Shalata. Yitzhira means the, that which is formed in the thoughts of the heart of man. That's what the word mean species is. So since species is a, a picture, a general picture, it's like a general ideal, a general idea. So that concept of mean is the Yitzira principle as expressed in the first chapter, in the first account of creation, because the word mean does not appear in the second account at all. Once more, in the first account of creation, Yitzira, to form, doesn't appear. It only appears in the second account, both in re relation to man as well as in relation to the animals. But in the first account of creation, we have the ten times mean. In the second account of creation, there's no, there's no mention of this concept of mean whatsoever. So what does that imply? It implies very, very clear that mean is now is taking the place in the first account of creation, the concept of yet of Yitzhira. In another class, we talked that in just uh, trying to understand the 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 uh, the creation of man, so so to create man recognizing or being consciously aware that he was and he is still being created ex nihilo. That's his consciousness at the level of the world of Priya. But man, as coming evolutionary, as thinking himself as just developing from some previous life form, like a uh, like a monkey or whatever you want to think, that's a that's an asiyah, that's a, actually that's an asiyah level which is severed from the higher level. That's why it's not true. If it would be connected, as we explained, it would have something to it. But if it's severed from the higher levels of consciousness, it's simply not 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 so. But what actually connects the two worlds, the bria. And Yitzhira is the species, the ideal of the, the, the subjective imagination of the heart, which classifies life forms into species. That's coming from the from the dust, as we explained. The man can either come from nothing, or from the dust, or from the or from the monkey. One of the three, or all of the three together. And the coming from the dust. Is the the word dust itself afar is a is a shortened form of its pre. That the first thing that comes from the dust is the fruit tree. It sprouts and grows out of the dust in its species. And then man, who is also likened to a tree, Adam et Hasadeh, he also grows out of the dust. So actually, spe the concept of species is it, since it begins in Torah as a botanical concept before it becomes a zoological concept. It means that primarily there are three botanical statements of mean before the seven zoological statements of mean. It means that to, to really understand properly the the origin of mean is, is a botanical uh, mind space. 
a species, and, it, and as its first measure, it has to do with a tree. A tree comes from the from the earth. The earth is, if a person would have a rectified earth in his heart, ha'aretz, his hearts, it's a pun on words. The very thing is sprouting from the earth, is sprouting from the heart, from the consciousness of the heart, which is the, the earth. That is that was like before the initial sin was the true perfect classification of things that one's heart is totally in tune with, with God's heart and you're giving the proper and Adam is Adam whose very name means Dimayon means likeness and imagination he's giving the exact proper name and classification to every part of the created reality okay, so up until now we said a very very important thing about the origin the etymological meaning of an origin of mean and how that's to do with picture since so the ability to picture things properly picture things is the heart but you picture reality and you take the prop just like now there's certainly all of the bio biology has to do with the uh, photography photography and biology go very strongly together so uh, the ability to be a, the the perfect photographer of the world and to see things exactly in the right lens and the right focus and what goes together and what doesn't go together that's a projection on the one hand you're trying to be as objective as you can to shoot the world shoot the pictures of the world but it's all projection of one's heart that's why if it, even photography good photography now is considered to be art it's, it's not science because photography itself is is art means that it's coming from the artisan it's coming from the heart of the of the filmer not even though he's 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 uh, he's taking a picture of reality so once more mean in Hebrew is the same word as tmuna, which is picture. And it's Masha Badomi Lev, it's called Yetzir Machshavot Adam. At the end of the first story of creation, it's at uh, the first pa parasha of Genesis, before the flood, it says that the Yetzir Machshavot Adam Ra, Ra Kolayom, it was, it became evil because that was the, 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 uh, the entropy that resulted from from eating of the forbidden fruit but the forbidden fruit is once more the improper power of association and uh, the kill cool the damaging of the koach all right so this is now the part number one of understanding what mean means let's then go on to see where else do we have the word mean in the torah how many times does it appear? We said it appears ten times in just in the first chapter. Ten times in the first chapter, which is the first account of creation. What, does the concept of species appear other places in the Torah? So, so it's very, very interesting that it only it appears in another two contexts. It's all concentrated. It doesn't appear at random. The concept of species. There are just three different context in the Torah that the concept species appears. The first is in the Torah in the, in the story of creation. The very, just the first account of creation that appears ten times. The second is in is the flood itself. When Noah was commanded by God to take all different species into the ark. So there in the context of the ark, of Noah's ark, and saving all of Li all life forms from from uh, destruction, nihil annihilation. So the word mean, taking everything by its species into the ark, appears seven times. It's also a very, very beautiful phenomenon that, that uh, has not been noted at all. That uh, it must uh, correspond to the seven mitzvot of B'nai Noach. Because as we said, that the, the fact that there are ten times the word species in the first account of creation corresponds to the ten sayings of creation. The fact that there are seven species in the story of the flood is also very important. Why aren't, what about the other three? In a previous class we said that the other three are have to do with the oceans. The fish were not destroyed, only the land. The, the continent animals. So there are only seven species 
We said that in the first story itself of the Torah, the vegetables are the three, and the animals are the seven. So even though one of them is the fish, it doesn't exactly correspond. Nonetheless, the the plants also were not destroyed. After the flood went down, so the trees appeared again and remained as before, the, the olive tree and so forth, the olive tree and the dove. So, in any event, the three of Noah are hidden. This is, we have explained at length in our book for the nations of Kabbalah and Meditation for the Nations, that the the the, the tikkun of, of mankind, which is B'nai Noach, is the seven. That's why there are seven colors to the rainbow, which is the covenant between Hashem and mankind. And here there's another, another most amazing uh, phenomenon in the Torah, that the word means species appears seven times. So that's the second context that uh, that the word species appears in the whole Torah. What, what is the third context? It must be the only three different contexts that the species appears. The third context is in relation to the laws of kashrut, of of pure and edible animals, fish and animals, and and. Uh, and birds versus those which are which are impure and therefore are unedible, forbidden to 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 eat. Now, the the laws pertaining to kashrut of the edible living creatures versus the inedible, the tamei, the pure ones versus the the impure ones, appears twice. It appears in Parashat Shmini in Leviticus in Vayikra and appears once more in Mishneh Torah and Deuteronomy in Parashat Re'e. In the first time that it appears, the word mean is repeated nine times. In the second time that it appears, in Deuteronomy in Parashat Re'e, the word mean species is repeated four times. It means that in the context of Kashrut, there are 13 different mentionings of the concept of species. And the 13 themselves are divided into 9 and 4. Where do we find that the 13 divides in Kabbalah into 9 and 4? That's the secret of the word Echad, the most important word in the Torah that, is, that equals 13 is the word 1. One is Echad, but in Kabbalah, one is considered to have two, even though it's one, it's, it's absolutely and essentially one. But nonetheless, paradoxically, in Kabbalah, we're taught that it has two dimensions to it, which is a relative male dimension and a relative female dimension. In the word Echad itself, the first two letters spell Ach, which is brother. That's the male element. And that, those first two letters equal nine. And then there's a big Dalit by itself. Dalit is the let lami kamat fum, that she possesses nothing of herself. That's the female dimension in the word contained paradoxically in the word Echad. Now, the relation between Leviticus, which is part of the first four books of Moses, and the final book of Deuteronomy is also that the first books, or the first time that the law is mentioned, it's its male dimension. But as, as it appears for a second time in the book of Deuteronomy, the same laws, that is its female dimension. So how amazing and beautiful is it that the concept of species appears nine times in its male dimension of Kashrut, and then another four times in its female manifestation, which is in, the, which is in Deuteronomy, in, in Varim, in Parashat Re'e. So now let's let's now uh, summarize. We have ten times in creation species, and then we have seven times in the flood, and the ark of Noah species, and then we have thirteen times species in relation to Kashrut. The relation between thirteen and seven is also a male-female relation. The laws of the Torah in general are male in respect to the laws of Noah, of humanity, which are female. 
The number 13, in relation to number 7, is also considered in Kabbalah always to be a male-female relationship. But even more amazing, why does it begin with 10? He said that 10 becomes 7, or the 10 moves on to manifest itself the second time as 7, and then it moves on to manifest itself in the, in the laws of the Torah, the mitzvot of the Torah is 13. But 10 is the is the midpoint between 7 and 13. It means that 10 takes 3 off itself to become 7, and then it adds the same 3 onto itself to become 13. So now the question is, the final question is, how many times do we have the concept of species in the Torah? And the answer is 30 times. If there are 30 times, which is 3 times 10, because first it's 10, then it's 7, then it's 13. But each one of the 30 times, never do you find the word mean by itself. The word mean always, in the whole Torah, always begins with a lamet. Limin after its species. You never have the word species by itself. The word, the three letters mean, which you call hundred, always follow the letter lamet, which is thirty. Means that you always have the word as not just one hundred, but actually one hundred thirty, which is five times twenty-six. But what's significant is that mean in all of its grammatical forms always derives from the Lamed, which is 30. So what more amazing th uh, indication could there be that there must be 30 means in the Torah? And that's exactly the number of means. And they divide in this most beautiful way it's into 10 and 7, then 7 and then into 13. Wh why does mean begin with Lamed? Is if we now we'll go back to what me, the etymological derivation of mean that mean means the conjecture of the heart. Even even the conjecture of the heart as the heart is photographing reality and, and, and attempting to classify thereby reality. But it's still it's the conjecture of the heart. The conjecture of the heart in Kabbalah is the la, is the word the letter lamed itself. And throughout the Torah, Lamed is called Lev Mevin Dat. That's in Otiot Rabbi Akiv in the Midrash. That the Lamed represents the understanding heart. The heart that understands knowledge. What does it mean knowledge? Knowledge is the corrected Koach how to put things together, how to classify things in their proper orders of classification. In their proper orders of Sug and Min. As we discussed before, so once more, this a uh, tremendously uh, amazing and beautiful phenomenon, both what mean means, and the fact that every single time that mean appears in the Torah, it's always with the lamed at the beginning, and there are exactly lamed, which is thirty appearances of mean throughout the Torah, in this beautiful form of ten, and then seven, and then thirteen. And always, obviously, it's implying that the final rectification of species or even the final rectification of one's power of imagination is proper eating habits because mean always ends with 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 kashrut, with eating what's permissible and what's uh, forbidden so it, 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 the in creation was still neutral the, when 10 became 7 it was a, a descent it's still good but it was a descent but then it has to come back in full and rectify. It's called Chuvata Mishkal. Whenever you take off, you have to add on. Gorinu Mosifim Vidarshin. So the same three that were subtracted now have to be added to the ten, and it becomes thirteen. And the thirteen always arouses the thirteen principles of divine mercy. And it's all in the context of what, of how to eat, what is permissible and what is forbidden to Meaning that if a person eats properly, then he corrects his power of imagination. And if not, the food itself that's eaten not properly, not just the uh, chitzon, is not just external laws of kashrut, but inner kavanot of, of eating, if it's improper, then he, that, that uh, damages the, the chush of the uh, koacham dameh, and how to properly classify and understand species. And even 
even s- the severed concept of evolution, which is wrong, as we said before, if it's severed from the higher levels, that's also because of uh, because of eating habits that uh, of Darwin and his procedures and his followers. That uh, that's what the Torah seems to be hinting at. That it all comes to 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 Kashruta Mahapali. So now we're going to say another thing. This now we we examined mean the concept of mean and species as it appears in in the Torah, the written Torah. What about the oral Torah? So in the oral Torah, there are different idioms that that refer to different uh, phenomena. For instance, on Sukkot, there is the concept of arbat haminim. The four, four species. What are the four species? The Lulav and the and the Hadassim and the Aravot and the Atrov. The four species, again, so the very first concept of species, very interesting to note that there's no idiom, or no ha- halachic uh, category of three species or two species. The first time that we find a group of species in the halacha of the, of the oral Torah is four species. And the four species, the Arbata Minim, are the the four species that we. Uh, it's once more from. It's all from the vegetable world. Another indication that the concept of species begins from the vegetable kingdom. But you're the four, four species. Actually, all of the times that it appears in the oral Torah all has to do with the vegetable kingdom. Once more, the first concept of species is the four species that we take on the Sukkot. The second, now when we say first and second, we're going numerically. The next number that we have, that there exists an idiom in the Torah and Halakha of species is Chameshet, I mean, the five species. What are the five species? The five species are the five grains that, that if they're baked, made into bread, then their blessing is Hamotzi Lechem in Aretz, and you have to have a, the bracha. So if Neha the right one, and then you, you have to say Birkat Amazon, also for Pesach, if you want to be, if a Jew has to has a responsibility, a mitzvah to eat a matzah on Pesach, so the matzah has to be made from one of the five species. It's called Chamesh Taminim, the five species of grains. So once more, it's, it's, it's a grain concept. The fact that there are five species of grain is also alluded to very beautifully at the beginning of the second account of, of creation. In the written Torah, it says, "Ele todot Hashemay varas bihi baram." These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. The first five words, the initial letters spelled tvoa. Tvoa means pratus, which means grains. And as soon as those initial letters spell the word tvoa, the very next letter is hey, the small hey of which the small hey of bihi baram, of which the sages say that Hashem created the world with hey. With five. So exactly after the concept of grains is alluded to, then comes the secret of the five. Once more alluding to the fact that there are f- five species, as we s- learned before in our previous class, a species can be a super species, because it's all relative species to, to category, to suk. In any event, these five species are, would probably even now biologically be referred to as five species as the four species would be referred to as four species. When do we then come to, to another number of species? There's no such thing as six species. There's no eight species, there's no nine species, species and there's no ten species. There's seven. Shivata Minim. Shivata Minim is what we celebrated recently on Tu Bishvat. That there are seven species of which the land of Israel is blessed. That are all enumerated in one verse in the Torah. It just doesn't say explicitly seven, but it says, Eretz Chita, Ozoora, Vegev, Noteina, Vrimon, Eretz Echem, Noteva. So it explicitly enumerates the verse in the in the written Torah, what the, what the Chazal referred to, the sages referred to as the seven species that the land of Israel is blessed with. Which once more, that's all, it's all the, it's all grains and fruit. The the chita, the wheat and the sora, the barley and the and the, the 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 grapes, the wine and the and the uh, teina and the and the fig and the 
and the and the uh, pomegranate and the and the olive and the date. Those are the seven the seven species. Shivat Haminim. So actually, the fact that the concept in the Ola Torah of, of species goes together with four or five and seven. That begins a quadratic progression whose, uh, to write it mathematically, is called the triangle of n plus 4. The first number is 4, and the second number is 5, and the third number is 7, and so forth. And if you examine that number, you'll see if that, that, uh, that equation, so you'll see that the twelfth number in that equation is 70. The 70 is 11 triangle plus 4. That's more the equation of that the, the first concept of how many species of something that group together is four species, and then five species, and then seven species. It comes to seven, and then it will come to 70. Afterwards, it will come to 140, which is two times 70. Afterwards, it will come to 280, which is four times 70. Now, after the Jews, the Jewish people, after the Exodus, after the splitting of the Red Sea, so it says that we came to a place which is called Elima, and there we found, the Jewish people found 12, 12 different uh, fountains of water and 70 palm trees. One of the first texts of Kabbalah, even before the Sefer HaZohar, is called Sefer Bahir. The book of of brilliance also as well as also splendor. There are two synonyms for light, but even before the Zohar, there's the called the Sefer Bahir, and the Sefer Bahir it says that those seventy palms that it says in the Torah that they found seventy palm trees just after the Exodus. I mean, the, the, the first wandering through the first site that they that they came to in the desert in the wandering in their in their journey to Eretz Yisrael to the land of Israel where there are seven species was they came to an oasis actually twelve different fountains of oasis and they discovered there you know, that they were doing biology divine biology. They discovered there in this oasis, it says in Sefer Bahir, 70 different palm trees. So what does Sefer Bahir say, say about it? It says that those 70 palm trees were not the same tree, were not of the same species. It said that they discovered 70 different species of the palm tree. And each one was a species in itself. And how, the, how does it define species? Before we said that even biology, there's a very, very uh, great controversy how to even define because since it's all the conjecture of the heart that's why different biologists will have different definitions of what of how to classify things into species so here it's here there's very clear the way Sefer Bahir defines what species this species is defined by three concepts this is a, a this is a scientific definition much better than any other definition that you'll find in any encyclopedia and biology book. Of what does it mean that there are 70 species of palm trees that they found out, that those are the 70 palms? Let's just say another beautiful gematria, Vishivim, marrying the two words in the Torah, and 70 palm trees they found exactly equal numerically, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Afad, Hiro Yisrael. Hashem is our God, Hashem is one, the declaration of Jewish faith. And there's a big ayin at the end of Shema, which ayin is 70. There's a big 70 that that itself can be understood to correspond to the 70 species of palm trees that the Jewish people merited to find, to discover in, in biology, in studying biology after singing the Song of the Sea, after the, immediately after the, the, sing, the singing of the Song of the Sea. So again, how does Sefer Bahir define what a species is? It's by three different, three different uh, principles. Principle number one is Lo Damta Zolizo. They did not resemble one another. That's why the picture was different. Number two, En Pu'ula Zo Ki Pu'ula Zo. Their function, they had a different functional ability, each one to the other. 
that function contains within it also the power of reproduction. But it's more inclusive than just reproduction. It's everything that it does. Lo pu lazo ki... The first, the first definition of species is, is how it looks. The second definition of species is what it does, how it functions. And the third definition is lo tam zeketam, the how it tastes. And throughout Kabbalah and Hasidut, it says that the inner soul of a fruit is its taste, its spirituality. The taste is the spiritual part. That's why if a, if a fruit loses its taste, you shouldn't eat it. Because it's just reduced to become purely physical. There's no spirituality to it. The taste is what in incorporates, or is the clear, the vessel, to hold the spirituality. which is called the Motsa Pi Havaya, the word of God that is creating the fruit. So once more, the definition in Sefer Bahira species is is sight, function, and taste. It said that they found 70 palm trees, which each one was a different species, 70 different species, and each one had a different sight, a different picture to it, which again, a picture, immediate, why do we start with picture? Because that's the immediate experience of the heart. It had a different picture, that's, we can even give this a, an order that the picture is when you're just looking at the, at the, at the creature from, from afar, you see it in a certain picture. But when you get closer, you examine its functions. It's now in modern science to examine its functions is with a microscope and with other uh, modern Kaleem vessels of how to examine what's, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, what's going on inside of it. And the third thing is, is, is when you not just examine it with the microscope, but you actually put it into your mouth, you incorporate it into yourself. These are the three stages that are necessary in order to identify species. How you see it from afar and how you study its activities. For instance, reproduction has to do with mating habits. That's one of the most important things to study in studying different life forms, is mating habits. That's called, that's part of the, the, the second, the second stage of defining a species, is function. And the third stage is what does it do to me when I incorporate it into, into the human being itself? How does it taste? What does that mean? It means that the, the objective of, ev of all life forms is to rise up and be incorporated into the human life. It's also part of the Torah vision of evolution, that every, all of reality is always rising up. That's also the concept of rectifying one's eating habits that we said before. Because the whole purpose of eating, why did, man, why did God create man that he has to eat? Because eating is, ele is elevating the lower life forms into himself. So all of these things are most people this this is maybe the most then the most important quotation in all of the Torah to the to understand species, this quotation from Seif Rabbah here in relation to the seventy species of the palm. How does it look? How does it function? And how does it taste? That if it's all different it means it's a different species. Now we said once more that the fact that there were 70 of them that fits mathematically into the that series of numbers which begins with 4, 5, 7. It's once more that the series of numbers is defined as mathematically as the triangle of n plus 4. And, and on that series you'll get 70 and then you get 2 times 70 and you get 4 times 70. So this was our second, second part in our discussion of, uh, of the concept of species, how it, how it appears in the Torah, both in the, in the written Torah and in the oral Torah. But when we repeat, in the oral Torah, all of the categories of species are all botany. Except for in Kashtur, with, with 
one slight exception that in the in Kashrut there are that it's also a zoology a little bit of zoology because it's animals in the Kashrut in the laws of Kashrut in the in the oral Torah it's only in the in relation to to a botany in the written Torah it, in the in, in the consecration it's both botany and zoology and in the flood it's also in the flood actually it's all zoology it's all animals and in the kashrut it's uh, it's also animals so it's also very interesting that in the in the actually in the Torah even though it begins that the essence is botany but it's more animals in the oral Torah the concept of species is all all plants <coughs> 